That's right, a phenomenal finish yesterday and the excitement is only just getting started. You can see here her best finish coming up in 2021 where she fell just short but she is back and uh, looking for a fantastic final round tomorrow. So with that, I am so pleased to welcome in Emilia Miliaccio onto our set. You are a friend of the channel, Emilia. <laughs> I appreciate so it. <laughs> it's wonderful to have you join us up here again. But you're teeing it up tomorrow in the final round. Just talk us through that final three-hole stretch. You've obviously got your fiancé on the bag. Such a special moment, I imagine, for you both. Yeah, it really was. And I actually made a really good par save on five. And that was kind of the key moment for me. And I told myself, OK, I do have birdie chances coming down the stretch. Let's forget about what happened on three, made a double bogey. And luckily, I was able to push that behind me and, and hit. Getting that putt on seven just really ignited the momentum, which was which was great. And having two small birdie putts definitely kind of eased the pressure a little bit. But the emotions were high. It, it just means so much to every single player. To We all want to be in the top 30, top 30 spots to get to Augusta National. And it, it just feels amazing to be able to compete tomorrow. So can you compare the two, you know, having, you know, been in a position to win before and in a position where you might miss the cut if you didn't play great. Uh, which was the greater pressure for you? And, and, and sort of take us through your thoughts uh, as you stood on that seventh tee. Yeah, I would say definitely the greater pressure is when you're close around the cut line because you, you want to be on the weekend, you want to play that final round versus when you're chasing to win or you're trying to hold the lead. You're very in control of your game. You're kind of more right. in control and, and you have the previous rounds to prove that. And so I kind of had to tell myself, okay, you played really well yesterday. You've hit shots to prove that you can hit them close. And I was actually channeling a lot of Rachel Keene and Rachel Heck vibes because I played with Rachel Heck last year and she made two birdies in the last couple holes to finish. And then Rachel birdied, I think, her last two last year. So it's kind of channeling some vibes for my friends. And just uh, it was great to have, you know, both of them obviously messaging me and stuff like that. So it, it was great and, and felt really good to be able to have this one in, in the back of my brain. Amelia, you've had some amazing moments here at this tournament. First of all, with your mom on the bag, and then now your fiance. As one of the few who's played in all of them, what does this tournament come to mean to you? It means to me a tournament where I can really share with the people I love. I mean, a lot of people, you know, have an Augusta caddy, and I had one in the practice round, and they're all incredible. But for me, I just really get to getting that opportunity to have someone I love wear that classic white jumpsuit. I mean, there gets, it's nothing better than that. It was so surreal for me to see my mom along, alongside me and, and, and wearing that outfit. And I'm so excited for Charlie to, to get to experience that with me and for us to do that together. And then for his families out, his, his mom, his, both of his uncles and uh, his grandfather. So it will just, and, and my dad and sister are coming out. So it will just be really special for them to get to watch us and for us to compete together. Well, I would say, well, there's, there's no better test as to whether that is the man that you should marry, whether you can get with, with your fiancé on the bag. I'm sure it's such a special connection um, that you have. But, I mean, looking back at the Wake Forest, uh, the Demon Deacon record at this event of, obviously, Jenny Cupcho triumphing back in 2019, what was that like for you as a team, and how much has this event grown? And just in terms of how you women now see the strength of this field and how important and how big this opportunity is. Yeah, I mean, I think it was so cool that the inaugural Augusta National Women's Amateur, it was Jennifer and Maria Fossey battling out in that really sportsmanlike way. I mean, they were fist bumping and it was kind of just the two of them go playing match play. And to have that be the first event and Jennifer being my teammate and getting to watch and learn from her. I mean, she's a major champion now. She played on the Solheim Cup and she was someone who you know, wasn't really that well known in junior golf. So I think she's a role model to a lot of people because you don't have to be, you know, the star your whole career to be able to make it on the LPGA. And, and she really shined in college. And to get to watch her, I watched her win the NCAA championship and watched her win the Augusta National Women's Amateur and definitely really inspiring for myself and everyone who's now competed. We, we all know when we see that iconic photo of the two of them fist bumping, mm -hmm. You know, everyone knows who that is and, and where that tournament's from. Looking ahead to tomorrow, and you've had experience, obviously, playing on the final day here, almost winning in 2021, but I don't know if you've had a chance to look at the forecast for tomorrow. 
it's pretty I bleak. Have. It's, yeah. it's pretty <laughs> it's pretty bleak. How specific are you? Do you look at the wind direction when you're out there? Do you anticipate where the wind's going to be coming com coming from when you play tomorrow? And then what sort of challenges do you think that you're going to face tomorrow as you work your way through the round? Yeah, I'm a big believer in controlling everything you can control. So I'll definitely be figuring out the wind direction, you know, how much rain are we going to be getting? That's something that I learned, especially from my coaches, Coach Ryan Potter. Um, he's someone who's like really adamant about that. Like we got to figure out all the elements. So I'll, I'll definitely be doing that. And for me, the tougher the conditions, it sets up better for me. I feel I play pretty well in tough conditions. It's something as a wake team, we always feel confident when we're going into uh, a course that's difficult and it's going to be rainy and windy. It sets up better for us when I'm hitting my irons well. It doesn't really matter if it's raining, so that's <laughs> kind of a good thing. And I don't really get upset if it's like bad weather. But hopefully, just for the sake of the televised broadcast of Augusta National Women's Amateur, that it's not too bad. But you know, I have my rain gear. Uh, I'll give Charlie my umbrella and we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone can stay positive during your rough final round, it is you, Amelia. I mean, you have such a wonderful, bright light that shines from you. Your personality is just fantastic. We've seen it on Golf Channel over the years. I mean, what would you love to go on and do? I know sort of inspiring the next generation. You're so young yourself, but we've heard you talk about, even just yesterday when you spoke to the media afterwards about telling girls at home that golf is a cool sport and that you should pick up this game because, you know, you should shouldn't be mocked for picking up a game that wasn't so popular for girls even sort of five ten years ago what would you say to the next generation who want to do what you are doing now yeah I would say that the hard work is worth it I mean to get to the level I am now and to have all these cool experiences and to be able to say I've played in Japan and France and you know South America it's all because I spent a lot of hours on the range and doing a lot of the hard stuff to to create memorable experiences you have to put in the work and so that's what i would tell them that the hard work is worth it and try to find try to encourage someone around you maybe a close friend to to keep keep you accountable to do the hard work together but that's what i would say and looking back i mean every trial that i faced is all worth it when you know get i get to play at augusta national and get to travel the world and, and meet so many just incredible people listening to your schedule going to school and also by the way working as a golf channel commentator <laughs> i'm envious of your time management skills but i'm wondering uh it often happens that when players turn to commentating that they learn something about the game that they might previously not have uh, have picked up on. I'm wondering if uh, in commentating uh, for the Golf Channel, if there's something along the way that you picked up on that has impacted the way you play the game. Definitely, I would say there's two main things that stick out. One is just course management, being able to hear how the caddies and players interact with each other. And I just remember listening to Brooke Henderson, her sister. I mean, they're so, every single shot, okay, where do I want to finish? Where do I want to aim? It just being that discipline and you really realize, wow, that's so important to, you know, shave off a couple extra shots in your round. And then two, it's crazy when you're watching golf, how easy it is to see when someone's letting their emotions get to them or compounding mistakes or one bad shot leading to another. And I think being able to sit back and observe that has helped me when I've been in that kind of situation and to actually acknowledge, okay, am I compounding a mistake because I was upset about the last one? So I think that's helped me mature emotionally, getting to actually see it from afar so it's been very interesting to kind of navigate those two spaces. Amelia, we talked earlier in the week about your summer plans and the fact that you don't plan to turn professional, which for someone with your resume is extremely unusual these days. So can you tell us a little bit about that decision? Yeah, I decided my senior year in college that I didn't want to turn professional, which was kind of crazy for me to come to terms with because I wanted to be a professional golfer my whole life. I didn't just want to be professional, I wanted to be one of the best in the world. So that was kind of, that was my goal. I wanted to play. I wasn't someone that was going to try for three years and see, I was going to go all in. Mm. And so when I made that decision, I had to be really honest with myself that, you know, I've played in, I think, five professional events, including two US Opens and one, uh, the Chevron Championship. And it just, it just wasn't wasn't for me. I love competing. I love playing tournaments. And having that break actually made me realize how much I enjoy competition. But I love to do many things. 
uh, including, you know, broadcasting and just <laughs> using my skills in, in many different arenas. So it's been cool to see just a couple other people, actually a couple players in this tournament as well, just come up to me and say, you know, oh, I you know, did a broadcasting internship because, you know, I saw you doing it. So it's like really cool to see that, you know, what I'm doing is making other players realize that they can do more than just play golf. Even I have a friend who's playing professionally, but also now writing for the LPGA. So it's just kind of cool how like you can do both. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's just been cool to see. Yeah, there is so much opportunity to be had in this game. We will miss you inside the ropes when that time comes, but there is so much to come from Emilio Miliacho. You will, of course, <laughs> be part of the Drive, Chip and Putt broadcast on Sunday as well, which we are looking forward to. But first of all, have a fantastic day tomorrow out there at Augusta. We're looking forward to seeing you in action and thank you for joining us. Thank you so much.